Okay, so the, today's uh, this afternoon for speaker Johan Andera uh, is tell us about generalized general belly formula polynomial CKP. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the organizers, uh, and it really is a pleasure to be here uh, <clears throat> on this conference in honor of John. Um, I think we met. I met John for the first time in probably in Scaveling, eh? but I don't remember at all. <laughs> I think the, the first time that I remember was here at this bispectral conference. But but you were Scaveling, and I was Scaveling, but I, I don't recall oh. this. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. When was the bispectral conference? 97 or something. That's, that's what Alex was saying. OK, but, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I decided to, yeah decided to give a talk about CKP because John, we have had some contact with John and John wrote two papers uh, uh, on that. We were both crazy enough to look at CKP. Yeah, 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 okay. <clears throat> um, well, I, I will, before I start, I want to mention uh, a few things. There, there are several CKPs. Uh, and this is the one which was introduced by uh, uh, Jimbo and Miwa or Jimbo, uh, Data Jimbo, Kashiwara and Miwa. Uh, but they also have another one um, where they looked at uh, at wild algebra or symplectic bosons or whatever. And, uh, and this gives a different hierarchy of uh, um, differential equations. I mean, um, and, but, but the, the Lie group is, is the same. It's C and C infinity. Uh, and uh, or SP, SP infinity is something like that. And um, uh, but the, the 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 modules are really different. I mean, there's this work that I did with uh, Sasha Olof and uh, Takahira Shiota, and there's uh, work by uh, uh, Anguelova, and uh, also on CKP. And there, the level of the the uh, the F line of, of the of, of the, the the infinite dimension Lie algebra is minus one half. What I'm talking about today is a different realization, is a different module, and there the level is one. So it's really a different, different construction, different things. So. Um, and so uh, what I want to do, I, I want, first want to say something about true functions, then go to KP, and then in the end, I will say something about CKP. Is this the one whose square is a KP tau? Yeah, but this I do not understand. I do, I do not understand. Yeah. No, no, no. This is, this is a KP tau function. And, and I do not. Oh, no, I uh, let me. I understand. I'm, I'm, I, will, I mean, the, the, the rest is work by Zabrodin and uh, Zabrodin, where they take the square of this element, but they have no idea what it means uh, in, in the sense of the representation theory. Okay. But in the original one that's in the sixth part of the sequence by that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this is the one. I, I will explain uh, later on. So I'm first going to say something about uh, uh, sure functions, uh, if it works. No, okay. Okay, then let's try it. Okay, it doesn't work. Uh, what? Let me go and fetch. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not with you. It's just been another union. <laughs> yeah, maybe okay, this. I don't know. Sorry, it's not working. It's not going to the next uh, page. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I will introduce the, the sure functions. Uh, and so for every partition lambda, there is an, uh, a sure function. And the way you define it, and uh, the sure function, they form some uh, orthogonal or basis for uh, uh, the ring of uh, polynomials. And, uh, and the easiest way to define it is by uh, first uh, defining the elementary sure functions which you can define by this generating series more or less. And then once you have these uh, uh, elementary sure functions, uh, you can define as lambda by some determinant where these guys are all elementary sure functions. And in fact, this is the, what is known as the Jagovic-Rudy formula for sure functions. 
Um, and now there's this already quite old uh, famous result by Sato. Could I just suggest, I know that there are some people who know about symmetric functions and they don't understand why this is a symmetric polynomial. Could you just say what the TIs are in terms of the excellence? Yeah, 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 I think, okay. I think you should do something like a TI is uh, X, uh, X1 to the I plus X2 to the I plus, and maybe divided by I something, uh, it's, it's, it's me where. It's in that sense, this is yeah. actually. <clears throat> Is mu uh, coordinates, uh, so yeah, so then you get the, the really the symmetric functions. So. Uh, but I I want to have the uh, the other ones, so I want to have the t's because they are related more to uh, to KP hierarchy. So Sato showed that all the sure functions are uh, tau functions of the KP hierarchy, the Petriashi hierarchy, and uh, they satisfy this equation, which is this uh, by, well known he wrote a bilinear equation. Um, and now, if you stare at this for a moment, you immediately uh, notice the following thing, that if you change the times in the tau function, right, or, or in the S lambda, then it still satisfies this equation. So in this way, you get new functions, which also satisfy the KP hierarchy. Um, and of course, our first question could be, are these all? And in fact, no, it's not. Uh, but in the, in 86, there was this, well, paper by uh, Katza Peterson on this uh, infinite wedge space KP and infinite wedge space and uh, kind of things. And they showed in the end, in the sort of the last section, that all polynomial KDV tau functions are of this form. Right? <clears throat> so the only sure functions um, that are, um, are KP tau functions, uh, that are KDV tau functions, are of this form. So it's really a staircase going down. I mean, n n minus one, n minus two, it's all one. Uh, and you should put all the c's equal to zero. Somewhere. These are the only two functions that uh, uh, satisfy this KDB uh, or, or KDV tau functions. And then uh, if you put this c in, uh, you get some, you get more. And um, and these are all the KDV tau functions. So the first thing that, that came up to me was, okay, what about if you uh, do this for Gelf and Dicky, right? I mean, if you would take all the shoe functions that are Gelf and Dicky shoe functions in some way, and then do this substitution, do you get them all? And in fact, Katza Peterson already say, no, this is not the case. It's not, you have to do something else. And uh, it took some time uh, uh, to realize, but this is what you, you have to do and uh, this is theorem uh, together with Victor Katz uh, a couple of years ago. And what you have to do is you, you should not substitute uh, in the shoe function in S lambda T plus some constant, but you have to do this in the elementary ones. So here are the elementary ones. And if you have lambda I, you uh, have an infinite or some set of constants, which we call C, C I, right? And if you have a lambda j, you should put in other constant. And if you do this, then you get the whole all, all k, k p tau functions, all polynomial k p tau functions. So this is, I think, a nice generalization because it, it really resembles this Jacobi Trudy formula, right? And uh, so what I will say uh, a bit later uh, a bit about the proof, uh, what you have to do. Um, and I understood from Palman that this was also a claim by Wilson. Uh, I don't know if he proved it or, uh, but at least, I mean, uh, we at least we have a proof, some proof. Um, okay. And if you look at the, the dimension of this, this uh, uh, all the tau functions that belong to this lambda, right? If you look at the projective dimension more or less, then it's exactly the length of lambda. So that's the dimension of the tau functions that exist. But, okay. Um, now we know or, uh, that there's also another formula to define the, um, the Schur functions, and that's a Giambelli formula. And uh, so you write this as lambda, as in this notation, where these are the, is the Frobenius notation. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the Frobenius notation, but 
let me try to explain that. So if you have a, I don't know, if you have a, a Fels diagram or a Young diagram, I don't know. Uh, then uh, what you do is, uh, so this is uh, a lambda is uh, three, two, one, one. And in this new notation, what you do is the following thing. You uh, sort of cross out things that are on the diagonal and you, for each of these sort of white boxes, you look how many boxes are below that one and how many are uh, uh, next to the one. So you take this one, so this is a two. Next to this one is a zero, so this is two zero. Uh, here there is a three. And so this is the Frobenius notation of this, this uh, lambda. So you also have to count if there's nothing next to it because you want to make a difference between this one and uh, this one. So this will be uh, two, uh, three, right? So you also, so, so what you get is here, there's a, a partition, a, a strict partition. Elements cannot be the same. And here it's also a strict partition, but you have to add possibly zero in some cases. Right. So this is the Frobenius notation. And in fact, this AIBJ is more or less, uh, I don't know, is, uh, yeah. is something like a hook or uh, has something to do with hooks in this diagram. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the uh, well-known formula for Schur functions. And um, of course, the uh, guess could be uh, what we did is uh, in this determinant, we changed the times by constant, so you can do that. But here there are two variables. So uh, one question would be, should I change this to, to, to CIs, right? Or should I change this to CJs? And okay, both are tau functions. That's not difficult to prove, but definitely you do not get all tau functions. So what you have to do is the following thing. Um, if you look at this, at the element which is in the, so here you have all these elements in the determinant. If you write down this element, then it's a sum of elementary Schur functions. But if you stare at this, then you see that here you have the A and there you have the B, right? So it somehow makes sense to plug in here different constants than you would plug in here. And uh, so this is what we do. We define a new function, which depends on now on two variables, which is the thing above, but in the second one, we change it with T prime, right? So this is a, a new, uh, and then this is the theorem <laughs> that uh, all polynomial tau functions <laughs> are of this form. So what you do in here, so here you, you if it's AI, you have constant CI, and with BJ, you, you plug in constants, dj. And these give all the, the polynomial tau function. So this is a reformulation of this Jacobi truly formula, right, for kp tau functions. And we call this the, the generalized uh, Jacobi, or the generalized Jambelli formula. And the previous one, where you substitute this constant in this uh, uh, Jacobi truly formula, the generalized uh, Jacobi truly formula. Okay. Um, so let me uh, sketch uh, how you get KP in sort of this Clifford algebra and uh, um, and how you sort of could prove this this uh, this theorem. And by the way, uh, we also we also proved uh, in this this uh, uh, this paper four years ago with Victor Katz. Uh, we also looked at all the Gelfandicki uh, tau functions, and we also have some formula for all the Gelfandicki tau functions. Right, and it, it's similar as this, it's in this Jacobi Trudy form, but uh, there is a restriction on the, on the constants somehow. And there is a restriction on the, on the possible lambdas that are possible. Okay. Okay, so we define the Clifford algebra, and this is for most of you, for some of you uh, probably well known. And you define a spin module, and then by taking sort of the, uh, these elements, the, so the quadratic elements with a plus and with a minus, uh, you get, you create GL infinity or A infinity. Uh, and uh, there's a, 
a center here for this A infinity and the center excess one. Okay, then, then this defines a, a module for this Clifford algebra. Now, if you restrict to this, you sort of see that, um, yeah, that the number of psi pluses and the number of psi minus, if you act with this operator, cannot change sort of uh, our. Uh, so, um, so it splits into irreducible modules. And um, with respect to what we call the charge charges, right? So there's a, a charge, so some degree operator or some degree. So with a plus, we call it plus one, with a minus, we call it minus one. And we call the charge of the vector, we call zero. And then you can decompose this module in into these spaces. And these spaces are irreducible modules for this GL infinity or for this A infinity. Okay. Um, and uh, what is the KP hierarchy in this, this picture? I mean, the KP hierarchy is, is the, the, the nicest way to, to find this is to uh, come up with a generating series of these elements, right? And then it's a residue of this, of this expression. And with the residue, I mean you, it's simply the coefficient of C uh, equal to, uh, uh, of C to the power of minus one. So, um, yeah. So it's a formal residue in some way. Okay, so this is the, K, <laughs> the KP hierarchy. Um, and then there's this well known thing that if you have this, this fermionic Fox space, this F, that you can translate this to something else. And the idea behind this is if you, uh, introduce these fields, right? Then they satisfy the commutation relations of a Heisenberg algebra. And so you can realize this as a multiplication with TI and differentiation with TI somehow, except for alpha zero, alpha zero is special. Okay, so there's a, a unique isomorphism uh, yeah. uh, between these, these spaces. And you can calculate if you have alpha I that this is zero for I greater or equal than zero. So there's this, this isomorphism between this fermionic box space and this space, and which is uniquely determined by uh, this, this uh, vector. This is the, the highest weight vector of the m charge sector for A infinity. <coughs> and okay, this, this, this disappears somehow. Uh, but but uh, I mean, alpha zero is defined. So if this is defined as Q to the M, then alpha zero is defined as uh, Q DDQ. So it sort of counts, so it gives M if it X, right? And then there's this uh, alpha plus of T, uh, let me write this down, as you cannot see. Um, so alpha uh, N is uh, PDTN. Alpha minus n is uh, n times t n, and alpha zero is q d d q. And so this is this uh, sort of isomorphism is completely fixed by this. And in fact, you can also write, uh, yeah, what what happens with these vertex of, with these uh, with these fermionic fields, more or less, and you get this expression. This is well known vertex. Uh, operator expression for uh, for charge fermions. This goes back to uh, uh, probably skirm, and uh, but it, it's also uh, uh, somehow present in the work of Dati Mukashiwara Miwa, and definitely in this paper by uh, Katsa Peterson. So you have this expression, um, and then if you use this this fermionic uh, expression for this. Uh, 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 for these functions, right? It's, uh, this fermionic KP hierarchy, you can turn this into this equation for the using this this sigma. So using this boson fermion correspondence. So this fermionic Fox space and this space of of uh, polynomials in T. Right? And uh, and there's a theorem which goes back to. Yeah, I'm not sure if Sato really mentions it, but uh, definitely Dato Yimbo Kashiwara Miwa. And also Katsa Peterson says that if F is in F0, F0 satisfies uh, this, this fermionic KP hierarchy, this is if and only if, if this group, uh, if it's in the, the group orbit of, uh, um, 
of the vacuum vector and the group all based for some some infinite dimensional group GL infinity. Okay, so this is uh, all well known and uh, very classical. Uh, I mean, it's probably there already for more than forty years uh, almost. Did you write the formula for tau? There it is. Ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you asked the, the question of the right uh, moment. Yeah. So if you have this, you can calculate tau as follows. So you put this. So this is something in terms of this. I mean, operators acting on on the fermions, or, or maybe some expected fermions in the group. So if you let it act, then these alphas are the alphas I had before. You see these ti's as uh, sort of parameters, right? And you can calculate this uh, vacuum expectation value. And this is exactly the tau function in, in the time steam. But this is a, a very important function uh, or expression because I will use it uh, several times. And of course, if you want, you can put here m and m as well, and you get something else. I mean, you get the same sort of tau function, but you have to shift this g uh, uh, a bit. Uh, but okay. g does not have to be zero. What? G does not have to be a group element. Right? You wouldn't get the sure function if you required it to just. Move. Yeah, you, you, in principle, you can uh, you can do this for any. But if G is not a group element, this is not a tau function. It does not no, satisfy. No, no, no. It, it has to be a group-like element. Yeah, and if you want the sure functions, yeah, but sure, okay. uh, well, you, yeah, maybe there's no equation. No, but, but, so, but for, for sure functions, this is this fine as well. It can be a non invertible element and still give it up. You know that. You take the product of the creation and the of the product of? of of a sequence of psi alphas and psi dagger betas minus beta. And it's still uh, that is true. Yes, but th th this is given by a g. Yeah. G acting on the vacuum will give you some expression in size, and then you can calculate that. But what I said is not an invertible thing; it's a product. It's a it's a polynomial. No, it's a invertible thing because it's the element of the dual group of this infinite. Uh, so so, so it, it, there is a g that produces that. Yeah, so, so, so what John is saying, I mean, you could, could have something here, right? But my claim is there is a G that produces what, what he what he puts there. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, uh, so what is important for my talk is that there, and it, so there is this Sato Grossmannian or the Tito Wilson Grossmannian, and <laughs> I need to somehow, I need two copies or some math. So, um, so we have these fermion elements. And uh, we define this, this uh, these two spaces, the, these two infinite vector spaces, uh, psi plus and psi minus. And uh, if you have an element in this group orbit, yeah, you can look at all the vectors in one of these two spaces, which kill the vacuum. You could call we call it the uh, annihilation space. Yeah. And you, it's so difficult to prove that this is a, a linear space, right? A linear subspace of this. Of this, and in fact, that's the Grassmannian, right? So there are two Grassmannian here, here, n plus and n minus. And if you want, uh, uh, you can take the combination n plus and n minus. And this is a maximal isotropic space for this this space, with respect to the bilinear form. And the bilinear form is the following. This is always zero. So if the signs are the same, it's zero. And if you have a psi i plus psi j minus, then this is delta i minus j. But that's a bilinear form. And this, if f is an O, then this, these elements that kill uh, this, this element f, they form a maximal isotropic subspace uh, with respect to this bilinear form. And in fact, what you have is uh, that this n plus of f, this is the point in the Sato Grossmannian. So only one of the two is, uh, is really the Sato Grossmannian or the semi infinite wedge space, or how you want to define this. And the other one is sort of the jubal. Right? But what is important is that this, this space is maximal isotropic for this bilinear form. And I will use this, uh, this later on. Okay. Uh, 
So what is the proof of the generalized uh, Jacobi Trudy and Giambelli formula? Uh, there are several ingredients, but one of the ingredients is uh, sort of the Bruhat decomposition of this group GL infinity. GL affinity almost looks like GLN in some way. I mean, uh, only N is not, not specified. And you can take the, the Bruhat decomposition, some decomposition of this group. I mean, you, you, you can think of the normal uh, decomposition of a of group like elements in GLN as, a, as diagonal and upper triangular and lower triangular. It would do something else. Here it's slightly different. But if you let it act, some part kills. If you let it act on the vacuum, some part kills it, and uh, some part of or gives one, and uh, some part still uh, remains. And so what you get is that this group orbit um, is a disjoint union of uh, of cells of spaces which are given by a partition. And this O lambda is this U acting on on lambda. So what is U and what is lambda? Because I haven't defined this. Uh, first of all, this lambda is sort of, we have this, this combination, I mean, we have this Fermi on the clock space, and we have this uh, uh, polynomials. And what you do is you take your sure function and you translate it back to what it is in the fermionic space. And this is called lambda. And this group U is a subgroup of, uh, of GL affinity consisting of infinite matrices, but there's only something, there are only ones on the diagonal and they're upper triangular, so something above, nothing down, right? And then uh, uh, this is sort of uh, what you do. So, so we take this element and we let this, this group or elements in the group act on it and see what, what happens, right? So these are, these are the elements. So you can write these elements in two different ways. One is this way, more or less. And the other one is this way. So here we have this, this normal lambdas, which you have in the, uh, in the partition. And here we have the, uh, the Frobenius notation of the, of, the, uh, of the element, right? So you see, uh, although it's the same element, it looks different how it acts on the vacuum, right? Now, if you let this U act on this, and but, but, uh, you act on this, then you get, uh, you get something. And if you let you act on this, you get something else. If you let you act on this, you get this Jacobi Trudy formula. If you let this G act on this, you get this uh, uh, Belli formula. So, uh, so you really get uh, something new or something uh, the same. I mean, you, you get the same elements, but they're represented in a different way. And, and what we use is the following thing. I mean, uh, what you get if you let this, this G act, right? You get here uh, tries which are positives or of negatives. But we use, in the proof, we use something of the following form. So you get, uh, you get, uh, yeah, you zero till M of, uh, say, uh, you get, get true functions with the coefficient in front. So AK s to the k of t. And what we use is the following thing. And this is not, not difficult to, to prove, but it's that this is equal to a m times uh, something where you write it as s k of t plus c. So here you, you, so there's one sure function where if you plug in instead of t, t plus some constants, you get exactly this. You can prove this recursively, or there's some formula uh, showing that. And this clears up a lot. I mean, this makes formulas much simpler and... Uh, okay. It's not the same AM in both ways. Both no, it's the same AM. The same? It's, this is the highest one, the, the, the one which is... Uh, so it's AM and then uh, lower. It follows immediately uh, from the definition of, uh, of uh, the, how you define the elementary sure functions. I mean, it's not difficult. Uh, um, okay, so this, so we have this Jacobi Trudy formula and we have this Giambelli formula. And uh, so I was interested in uh, looking at, uh, uh, we have this, this group orbit of the KP hierarchy, right? We have the GL infinity, which acts 
So you get all kinds of tau functions, but the CKP hierarchy as Data Jimbo Kashwara Miwa defined it, they look at the subgroup SP infinity or C infinity, if you want, I mean, that acts on these elements. So inside this, I mean, I think of this as, as so you, you have this element that you have this group going down, right? And this is sort of the orbit. And so inside, if you take a, a, a smaller group, you get a smaller orbit, right? So these are all tau functions. So the question is, what are these tau functions if they belong, if the group element belongs to this, this C infinity? Okay. Um, so what you define, uh, so, so we have to define the C infinity inside this uh, GL infinity. So you think of this as the sort of uh, uh, infinite matrix vectors or uh, something. I mean, EI is an infinite vector with an I on this, uh, on this place, uh, with a one on this place. And then uh, you have this Q symmetric bilinear form or symplectic form, uh, which is given by this, right? And then uh, SP is the, the subgroup that leaves this form invariant uh, for the Lie algebra, C infinity, right, is the, the elements in A infinity. So I said this holds. I mean, this is all quite standard. Um, and uh, in fact, and this is in the papers by uh, Jimbo Amiwa or Dr. Jimbo Kashuara Amiwa. Uh, they realize this in a certain way. What they do is they have this uh, automorphism on the Clifford algebra. And this is an automorphism of order four, not of order two. So there's a, they also have something for BK to get BKP in there. You have an evolution here, it's not. It's really order four and it's defined as follows, right? And then I'm not sure what is there. Um, can you, I, I'm sure, is it, you cannot hide that or, excuse me? Excuse me, is it possible to remove the green and the red or not? No, because you're Okay, okay, no? Oh, no. Oh, let me go back. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, it's, uh, okay. So C infinity is this, uh, is in fact the G and A infinity, which are fixed by this, uh, uh, but it's automorphism. And in fact, if you restrict to the, the quadratic elements, right? This, so if you restrict to A infinity, then it's an involution. So on the A infinity, it's an involution, but on the Clifford algebra, it's not, right? It's uh, something of order four. Okay. So you can calculate what this I does on the alphas, right? So it fixes the ones uh, which are odd with N odd. And the one with an even, they get uh, mapped to minus itself. So, uh, I mean, the, so this means that this, uh, that alpha two and alpha three, alpha four do not live in C infinity, right? So they're outside C infinity in some way, uh, but I still want to, to keep them uh, because we are going to look at the, the sort of fixed points under this, this automorphism. Okay. <clears throat> Because uh, because one has this right, I see of psi uh, uh, plus or minus i gives uh, something I, I don't know some sign here and then uh, uh, psi minus and plus of i right. So it changes this and with possibly with the sign you see that all the positives get mapped to the positive and all the negatives get mapped to the negative. Uh, and which means that sort of the, the space that kills the, the vacuum gets mapped to the space that kills the vacuum, right? So it's possible to extend the automorphism on the whole module, on the module, on the spin module itself. And this is what we do. I mean, you, we extend it by saying, okay, on the vacuum in XS zero. And then you also have this, this module on the vacuum. And now using the boson fermion correspondence, we have these alphas and we know that all odds are fixed and all evens get mapped to, to minus one, right? You can sort of transform the, the automorphism to this new space and you get this, uh, this so, and you see all evens are, are uh, this, yes, all, all evens get mapped to minus one and all odds are fixed, right? And then uh, if you let this act on this fermionic 
bilinear identity, right? Then this here you have psi minus, this turns into the psi plus, and you get this equation. And this is uh, the equation that uh, that people call the fermionic CKP. Right? Okay. And what some people do is that they forget about this even times, right? But I want to keep them uh, as long as possible. Sort of in the end, you can put them to zero, but I want to keep them somehow. Okay. So this is this uh, fermionic, uh, so this is the CKP hierarchy. And then using this boson fermion correspondence, you can rewrite this in terms of uh, some bilinear equation in these times or in uh, acting on the tau function. So that's exactly the same as in the KP case. Okay. Now, what you see is, so this IC, so, so for C infinity, these elements should be fixed somehow. So if I take a tau function, which is in this C infinity group orbit, it should be, fi should be fixed by this, this element. So what happens is that if you look at the tau function, that if you change, let this isomorphism act, right? So to multiply the even times with minus, then this tau function should be invariant. It should not change, which means that in these, I mean, if you think in terms of polynomials and in terms of these even variables, it should be an even order somehow. I mean, the sum of these things should be even order in the even variables. Okay. Um, so, and this is related somehow to some isotropic Rasmanian. So what we had is we had this space of, of size, right? And we have this involution and you can look at, uh, at this, these two Grassmannians. So we had this N plus of F and we had the S N minus of F. Now, this is an important observation. If you have an element F, which is in this C infinity group orbit, it gets fixed by this element F. So if V plus or minus F kills the thing, then if you take I of C, then you get this, it also kills the thing, right? <clears throat> so what happens is that uh, I of C uh, switches V plus to V minus somehow, Right, so it, it interchanges this one with this. One. So it interchanges n plus with n minus. So it interchanges the, the, the Grassmannian with its, I, I don't know, dual one, or I don't know, know how you want to call it, but, but this is important. Um, remember this, these two were a, a maximal isotropic space with respect to this bilinear form, right? So if you have this, so if you take, uh, uh, M plus, and you take IC of this M plus, right? you still have a, yeah, it still is maximal isotropic, which means that if you take two vectors, which is, are in this space, then if you take the bilinear form of the two, then it's zero. If, uh, not of the two, but if you take V and IC of W, then this is zero. Where, they, where this is this bilinear form, which I defined, which I defined here, all this. Right. But then this makes it possible to define a new form, which is symplectic. Namely, you can define this omega of PW as P, and here you do take this IC of W. Right. So this is a symplectic form. And then this holds for this omega. And if you remember uh, well, then this sort of was almost the same uh, thing as, as what defined the bilinear form, which defined the C infinity. It's, except that instead of pluses, there was these EIs, uh, the, the same thing, the symplectic form. And uh, it's also a symplectic form if you restrict to this psi plus. And what happens is that this N, N plus of F is a maximal isotropic space of psi plus with respect to this bilinear form. This, so we really have a Lagrangian subspace here. So this orbit that consists of all Lagrangian subspaces of this somehow, this, this psi plus, right? Uh, yeah, of plus, psi plus. Okay. Uh, and this, this group really, the sp infinity, this group, so or c infinity, uh, I mean, this is SP infinity because it's a subgroup of GL infinity. You also have A infinity, which is a bigger group, right? 
and the C infinity will be a, a subgroup of that. But we're looking at this SP infinity because we want to uh, get uh, polynomial solutions. Okay, so this is this uh, uh, this thing. There's this. Uh, so we, we now want to look at the polynomial tau function for this this CKP hierarchy. And this is an uh, uh, important observation um, that if you take a, a vector V plus, right, and you make the combination V plus IC of V plus, and you let this, this uh, automorphism act on it, then you get the same element back again. So what is important is that, that this IC does not change this element. And we sort of know what our sort of polynomial KP tau functions, polynomial KP tau functions is not, nothing else than, I don't know, something like, what is here, you have a vector uh, V1 plus, V2 plus, and uh, VK plus, something like this, and then you have a, a V, so another one, V1 minus, VK minus, or, uh, uh, acting on the vacuum and you can also exchange them and, and this is all, always a tau function. You can prove that this is always a tau function, even if you permute these elements. I mean, it will be the other tau function, but, but uh, so what happens is that if you write something down of the form this, this is a KP tau function, that's for sure, but it is fixed under this automorphism. So it's an element in, in this, in this group orbit for, for this symplectic group, right? And thus it is a CKP, 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 CKP tau function, I'm sorry. And the theorem is, and uh, I want to present a, a few uh, versions of this, uh, that every CKP tau function corresponds to such an element. I mean, in principle, this is not clear because these elements, V1 plus V2 plus VK plus, they do not have to form an isotropic subspace. They do not have to commute to outer. They, they, uh, um, if you plug them in, into this uh, uh, omega, they, they do not have to give zero, right? Because you take arbitrary vectors. In principle, they're not, I mean, they do not form a k-dimensional isotropic subspace, right? So this is the, the first. Then the second one is uh, you can calculate this and what you get is sort of this Giambelli formula, but not completely. It's because uh, one has the order here and one has to uh, keep track of the order. So here we have V1, V1, and then V2, V2. And uh, what you would like to prefer is first the V pluses and then the V minuses. But somehow we do not have that. So if you calculate what it is using this formula that uh, John asked me, what is a tau function but using this and using Rick's theorem, because this is really what you use, uh, you get uh, that the corresponding tau function is this, this one, the determinant of this, where here we have these functions which, which showed up in the Giambelli formula, where you change the times, except that the second one should be, uh, one only has A's and no B's, right? So, A, so, so this is the, the partition that we have here is self conjugate Right? The, the number of A's and the number of B's are the same. I mean, the, not, not only the numbers, but the, 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 the A's are equal to the, to the B's, more or less. <clears throat> and there's another thing, instead of substituting some different thing here, you should take the IC of CJ. So you see this as a time, so the J time. So if J is even, then it's simply CJ. Uh, and it's minus CJ, if J is odd, it's CJ, right? So you plug this in, and this is in the upper triangular part and even on the diagonal, but below the diagonal, you have to do something else. So you have to do this. So you, you switch J and I, and somehow you have to, yeah. and this is because you have this, this ordering of this element. Right? This forces you to do this. And these are certain constants. <clears throat> And since every, every CKP tau function corresponds to an element of this form, if you calculate what is this, you get this. All polynomial tau function are of this form, right? Now, this is maybe not such, such a nice expression because you have this here, but you can 
can rewrite this and let me do that. Uh, so what I said was these PJs, they do, do not form an isotropic subspace with respect to this omega. But what you could do is you could sort of modify these VJs and sort of only take isotropic elements for this omega, right? If you do that, you can reformulate the previous theorem and you get the following. So here, I mean, this is a self conjugate partition, right? What you do is you have this gamma AIs, AJs, here you plug in CJ and here the I of CJ. And now there's no difference between upper triangular and lower triangular, uh, it's the same. But uh, this is not correct. If you do this for general Cs, but if you somehow assume that these VJs are much more isotropic, I mean, VJ will be, uh, uh, VJ, omega VJ, VJ will be zero. But if you take a two, they do not have to give zero. So if you force this on, you get this strange uh, uh, restriction that all these elements for uh, J greater than I, you have to replace by things which are lower. If you do this, then this comes out, right? So if you, you assume this and do this substitution, then this is a, <laughs> is a, a CKP tau function. Now this seems weird somehow, but let me show this in an example, right? So this is the example. So I calculated T, 1010t, where I plugged in arbitrary constants, right? Which, which were allowed. So this is this partition, right? This is, uh, so here and here. Uh, so it's 11100, uh, right? <clears throat> so I plugged in these constants and I got, without assuming, without plugging in this, this other form, right? Uh, so you get this. And then what you can do is you can apply the, the evolution, right? So I take this one and I take the evolution and see what happens. And if you subtract them, this is the term that is left. Now, <clears throat> this thing should be invariant under this evolution. <laughs> so what happens is that this part should be zero. And you can choose that by choosing this second one, C22 equal to something, right? So we choose this C22 equal to this expression. But now if you stare at this for a moment, then you see that it is, this is a minus uh, second elementary Shaw function of C11 minus C12. And here you have a C21 and the C22 is not there because the C22 is here, right? So you get this expression, right? And this was really, and now let me go, go back. This is really this, this thing that we have here. So in this example, you see this happening, right? And, and this simply means that I choose my Cs in such a way that all the vectors that I have, if V1, V2, until Vk, form a maximal isotropic, form an isotropic subspace. So I force them to on, and then you get these restrictions. So you have to plug this in. So you first calculate what it is, and then substitute all this, and that's your tau function. Okay. So that's uh, uh, the only possible uh, tau functions, only tau functions that are possible. In the paper that we wrote, we also look at uh, a reduction. So if you do a reduction, like uh, uh, KP, KDV, you can do the same here. You could do the two reduction, but in fact, the two reduction of this hierarchy is exactly equal to KDV, is a KDV hierarchy. And the three reduction, no, the, the four the reduction of the, I, I, don't, I don't remember. One is this uh, Kaup, uh, Cooper Schmidt uh, uh, hierarchy, and we, we calculate some, some tau functions there. Uh, but you also can do the re restriction and you sort of write down what happens here. Uh. Okay, so this gives all the polynomial uh, uh, KP tau function, uh, CKP tau functions. And this, <clears throat> if you would like to write it in this Jacobi tree formula, it's really very uh, difficult. I mean, it's, it's not easy. So really here, one needs these Giambelli formulas more or less to calculate this. And uh, so that's, uh, that's more uh, or less all I wanted to present. Uh, uh, so this is the example. I thank you very much uh, for your attention.
Any questions? So the, rule, okay. yeah. the rule is you only take uh, symmetric partitions. Yeah. You only take symmetric partitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah so then you evaluate and it translates, but not arbitrary translates. No. It translates with somehow other invariant in the DMV. Uh yes 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 but 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 you also need this I mean it depends which 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 one you you want I I prefer the first one uh, uh, to be honest so there there are these two theorems right either you have this but then you have to plug in this which is sort of nasty mm -hmm. or you have the this one but here you have to do something with above and below right and this has to do with the order that we have here if you would take another order but that's but if you interchange this right if you start it then it's not clear that it's a, a, a tau function right because uh um or is it yeah it's, it's because so maybe it is right yeah yeah but yeah it probably still is uh um, I'm not, no, I have to think a bit. I, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the fact that, that two of these give this right uh, um, forces that this, this should be a CKP tau function. If you reorder, then, then probably I'm not sure what happens. Maybe one has to do something else because then you, you these permutations, I mean, yeah, computation relations are involved somehow. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So, so you really have some. So it really should be a, a self-conjugate partition. These are the only uh, sure functions which uh, belong to this. I think you also mentioned that in your article, right? True. <laughs> I think so. Somewhere. So uh, I. Yeah, yes. it's it, it's a related question. So in 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 this representation, C's are not the same as as, uh, as in principle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because here they're arbitrary or yeah they're so, arbitrary. so 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 you can you can make it a nicer looking matrix at the cost of uh somehow incorporating this yeah 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 uh, okay yeah so so here this is really arbitrary in the next one you really have to do the substitution otherwise it's it's not okay and we saw this in this example right but i calculated yeah. that i mean you see this happening uh and and you in that case you have to force that these 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 really are um i decided that uh, isotropic and here you do not have to i mean thank you maybe one more just just one other comment it's purely terminology but you're calling very reasonably you're calling this generalized jambelli yes uh because the original jambelli was a property of uh of sure function yes. and this is general mm -hmm. but we are we already uh some time ago like yes. about 10 years ago called something more general yes the generalized okay, generality, okay. of which this is a special case okay so, let me just say for the, in case anyone is interested okay maybe we should call this less general uh, <laughs> intermediate uh, we, we did use that expression in the yeah. paper by uh, victor and also myself yes. but it was to refer to something which includes this but is more general and it is the statement that the Jambelli identity, yes. which is really just a determinental formula mm -hmm. for something labeled by an arbitrary partition, yes. expressed in terms of uh, uh, hook partitions. Yeah, it, but it doesn't in, expressed as a determinant of hook partitions. Yeah, but that's the one I showed before. I know, but what I'm saying is, it doesn't have to be a function. It's just any Plucker coordinates for any Grassmannian that that is satisfied. And the sure functions and your polynomial uh, generalizations are just special cases of that. Okay, uh, I'll tell you that. Yeah, okay, okay. Call. okay. Thank you very much. Okay.